In this video, I'm gonna show you some amazing aftermarket rooftop and bed rack options we saw at Overland Expo West, specifically designed for the Rivian R1T, and the first R1S roof rack option that I've seen. It's pretty cool, stick around. It was pretty obvious that the Rivians were out at full force this year at the Expo. I saw at least seven on display with different vendors. We noticed on our drive down that we could have used more rooftop rack storage. So I was on the lookout for good aftermarket rack options and there were a lot of them. I do love the Rivian rack system, but all of these impressive options use the original mounting points, but take the rack system a step or two further. There are six different vendors in this video, including four R1Ts and a tricked out R1S. So be sure and hang on for that one. Here we go. All right, so I am here at the range booth talking to Eric. This is Eric, he's with range and they've got something special here for me. They've got an R1T and uh, I wanted Eric to just walk us through what it is that you've got here and uh, tell us about this, how it connects to specifically to the Rivian. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm with Range Industries. We have a couple different racks that we offer for the R1T. Um, this is our mid-height rack. Um, it's about 13 and a half inches tall from this crossbar down to this. Just to be clear, this tent is not yours, but the rack. Correct. Rack we make the rack. So just the rack, not the tent or with a shovel or hatchet or anything. So this is billet. It's powder coated. We machine it in San Diego. Um, we make three different Not types. plastic. Yeah, this is all solid. Um, what about this piece, also aluminum? Yep, this is aluminum. This is 80-20 extrusion, so it's a very standard profile. Everyone makes accessories for it. Um, we offer three different heights. This is our low height rack, um, and really it's about level, or it's about the same as the factory racks that come from, from Rivian. Um, so that, that brings up a very important question. How is this attached here? Correct, okay, so we use, uh, stainless steel unit. This is what it looks like. Um, it fits in the, the Rivian pocket, so the, the factory pocket there. So this drops in under the crossbar and then we use two bolts that come in through the top. There's some bolts here. Yeah. Okay. So it's a little bit slower to install than the factory Rivian, Rivian system, but it's very it's robust. It's not intrusive. No, it's not at all. It's very robust. This, this rack is very sturdy. So Tell me about what you've got on the interior here. Yeah, so we also have a, a system for a Milwaukee Packout. Um, we have some aluminum extrusion that we mount up here to the front of the cab. Uh, it's a no drill install. We use the, the factory um, factory mounting holes. And then, yeah, we make this aluminum plate that bolts on. And really, it's very simple. The, the Packout system really just, you know, you line it up. And it drops in and it's real solid there, not going to come out. And if you don't have Milwaukee gear, can it just be useful for other types of gear as well? Um, you could use the extrusion rails to kind of fabricate your own system, but these plates are specifically for the Milwaukee system. Pretty cool file. Okay, so tell me about these rails and like, how do you attach, actually attach things here? Yeah, so here, we'll actually pull this off and get a better look. But if you kind of peek behind, there's some T nuts that drop into that. Side. Oh yeah, I see. They're that. they're standard. You can buy them anywhere, really. Like McMaster is easy. Um, okay. And yeah, so you just drop it in there. They're threaded inserts, and you can put anything you want on there. And what's different about this version that's on the ground here? Yeah. So this rack, it's called. It would go this orientation, right? Correct. It it fits on the on the bed this way. So we call it our Mariner rack. It's the tallest one we offer right now. It's great for kayaks and canoes, so or like a ladder. Exactly. Whatever. When you when you mount it, it's actually level with the fact the factory Rivian crossbar. So those crossbars in the front, not level with the top of the cabin, but level with, with the crossbars with the cross themselves. Cross so it'd be a flat um, place to put a kayak or something nice like that. Mounting surface. Cool. Thank you so much. This is really really cool. Yeah. No problem. Thanks for coming. I by. want some of these. Thanks. Yeah. So we've got another R1T, another white R1T, which is my favorite color. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Tiger of Spider, and Spider is making this rack here, and I wanted Tiger to tell me a little bit about it. Okay, this is our first rack that we just finished for this show here at Overland Expo. Um, this is a no drill. It uses a billet mounting that go underneath here. This, this one is still so it's not clipping into the actual clip. No, there, there's no, it's not the type that you clip you, on. But you did have to remove the bit yes. inside. How do you remove that? To, in order to remove the old one, you have to drop the headline a little bit. 
to get in there and unbolt it. Okay, so it's not invasive, but it, but it does have to come out. Correct. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's it's very simple. I like simple. that this is attached directly, yeah. and it's solid. It's very solid. It, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, with the billet, says machine in there, and it's a full length. The size is about 51 inches wide, and I believe it's about 72 to 75 inches long. Weight capacity. Dynamics for about 200 and you could do another uh, four or 500 easy on this thing. Tell me about these bits on the inside of the bed as well. And we also have a full Molly panel that goes all the way on yeah, both I'm sides. the camera, let me see if I can do this. Yeah. Oh, actually I can. Yeah. So this bit here. Yep. And the one yeah. on the back. The back oh, and then there's the one on the front side of the, yep. front side of the bed. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, those are kind of standard, just attach points for yep. various things like it's, you see here. It's both right into the existing hole that's already there. So it's also non-drill. Non-drill. Very important for Rivian owners spending yeah. a lot of money on these there, vehicles. There is no drilling involved. Um, it just take a little bit of time for you to do the install. There will be a video upload on our YouTube channel. Uh, the channel is Spider No Drill Roof Rack. Once it's done, it'll be uploaded there for you guys to check okay. it out. Okay, and you can see here some examples of some things that are on top here. These are, of course, things you don't make, but they are um, what you might use the rack for. So right. you've got a surfboard and some other things. And you you make attachments to attach to these crossbars? Yes, we have attachment. You could do awnings. You could do uh, the max tracks. You could do your kayak. We have some of the attachment on our website. These are the brackets that we make in the house. Um, it goes right up here, slide in, drops in, and there's a T-nut bolt that we provide that attach on both sides. And then you use your existing hardware that comes with your awning and bolt it right in place right here. Okay, and so then you can attach whatever you want to here. Correct. Like a like an awning tech, potentially that comes yeah. out. How would you attach a rooftop tent? You, just, you would just attach it to one of the crossbars in there? Correct. It, you're, it, it, it would be exactly the same way that you would attach to any other rack okay. and your tent that comes with the clamp, it goes right under with the crossbars. Um, talk to me a little bit about, in, about aerodynamics here in the front as well. Um, this one is still like the first version as a prototype. Um, we try to keep it as close to the roof as we can with the, uh, the front for sound there, reasons for sound and noise, wind noise, okay. especially okay. now most, most of our rack, we try to minimize the noise because it, if there's a lot of noise you just feel like you're inside a drum yeah <laughs> so. um and i was talking to austin here the yes. other shout out to uh -huh. austin he said that he drove it down here and he's he's tried uh, it with and without this rack and noticed no difference in efficiency as far as uh, as far as wind drag which is something that i'm seeing with small racks as well right here on s2 yeah are, those, those are about these small rack pieces these are universal uh, mounting that can go on the rack. On and, the top? Correct. Okay. And, you know, we have tire swing out yeah. there. That, oh, gotcha. That's going to be able to put on the Rivians. Oh, okay. And it's a universal. And we, cool. we have different, you know, set up. A lot of stuff and work. Where are you based? We're in Covina, California. Covina, cool. Southern California. All right, cool. Thank you so much for All taking right. the time, Tiger. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, I'm here at the Thule booth with Milo, and Milo is an R1T owner. He has this beautiful forest green that's kind of tricked out with a whole bunch of stuff, including these crazy tires. Tell me about these tires, first of uh, all. These are the uh, General Grabber uh, X3s. Um, I've run them on multiple bills, and I decided to say, you know, hey, what the heck, try it on this. And <laughs> it's probably overkill. I mean, the ATs um, are plenty, um, you know, for... A vehicle this heavy yeah. and this powerful. Yeah, although uh, though we've noticed that in the snow they're not great. So <laughs> the so this I, I'm looking for some time. Anyway, um, tell me about Thule and what what you're repping here. Uh, yeah. These are the uh, mounts that um, they, yeah, they the connect new, in. The new Thule fit. Yeah, that basically goes into uh, Thule's all new cap rock. It's a platform. This is the medium. It's about 59 inches both ways. Okay. And T slots, very modular uh, to fit anything up there. Um, this one's specific right. to Rivian, and uh, yeah, yeah, it fits just nicely over the top of the cabin yeah. there. And then I love this uh, little shade here, which is taller than me, which is nice because yeah. usually I have to duck down. Yeah, or you're at an angle. Yeah. yeah. Oh so, yeah, the, then they're nice and flat as well. Yep. Um, I want to know a little bit about driving with this particular rack on the top. 
Um, do you hear it? Is it, uh, have you noticed any, any effect in the range? I, I have, I've not noticed anything, uh, a decrease in range at all, uh, which is really interesting. And, uh, as far as noise goes, I mean, it just sounds like there's a, you're driving through like a slight breeze. It's not annoying. You can still have clean, fun phone conversations, yeah. listen to your music at the same volume. I'm driving with a rooftop rack today and, uh -huh. and it, it's loud enough where it feels like your window is kind of like halfway rolled down. Like oh. it's, this one's not, like not even that. Yeah. Not that? Okay. Not that. Now, I will say that if you do take that off, you'll hear a pretty good whistle even like at 15 miles an hour. Which which of this front little uh, yeah. thing here? Yep. So I would highly recommend uh, keeping that on Oh, there. very interesting. It's really and, interesting. And I, I find it interesting that it's 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 leaning this way rather than Red, this than way. Down. Do you know, do you know yeah. the reason? Really? I do not know why. But it works. It works. Apparently. Yeah, okay. absolutely works. <laughs> And then you've got this Thule tent in the back here. Yeah, this is the same um, crossbars. Yep. Or same rack system. Yeah, same Thule fit, uh, different uh, crossbars, but basically, you know, any any Thule crossbar will work. Uh, obviously, these are a little more heavy duty to hold up the tent. Yeah. And, so this, um, and this will fold else. over that way. Yeah. And then... So this folds up, and it's the Thule approach. It's the medium size, and it'll be lower than the cab. So I've got zero right resistance right. So and the drag. Ending height is lower than the cab. Yep. That's great. Well, yeah. thank you so much. It's such yeah. a pleasure to meet you, Milo, and some a fellow a fellow Rivian owner as well. Yeah, yeah. I bought this in August or September, and um, gonna hit forty thousand miles on my Whoa, way. Whoa, forty k! That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Milo has a YouTube channel and Instagram. Can you tell us where to find it? Yeah, YouTube is Offroad Milo. It's really new, so there's one or two videos up there, and then my Instagram is Navajo Milo, which really covers everything that I do. But if you want more things specific to Rivian, go to Offroad Milo on Instagram. On Instagram. Okay, great. All right, might have hit the mother load here with respect to Rivian vehicles at Overland Expo here. Uh, this is Mike with DCE, Direct Current Engineering. Correct. Tell me about what you got here, because you've got an R1S. This is the first one I've seen at the show, besides the one that I have in the, in the lot over there, but it, um, it's got some real great mods on it here. Sure, so we built this R1S, and there's an R1T behind you and a couple other trailers. We built these for SEMA in November of last year. We barely got this SUV in time, and we kind of... <laughs> You know, we started 3D scanning and designing what you see. And, you're, and you're, you own this truck. This I is do. your. I do. Yours. drive this, and it's uh, it's my baby. So, uh, we we developed, and this is probably the tenth iteration. We did a lot of R and D. This is a rock slider. We have one for the R one S, and this and the R one T is a little bit longer, but a very similar. So they're not the same. The T and the S are. They're different not the same. Sizes. The wheelbase is shorter on this, so right. everything's a little bit tighter. Okay. Um, I love these sliders because the clearance, you don't, you don't have a take a clearance hit, maybe an inch or so, but no. So the bottom of the rock that. slider is the bottom of the car. It oh. doesn't, it doesn't reduce ground, ground clearance. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. And we've done exactly. some testing. We have customers that have done an LA to San Francisco drive multiple times stock and with these, and we've seen no reduction in range. So and, uh, well, my wife and son have a hard time getting in and out of the T because of the truck and the S because it's so high. Exactly. So this is another it's perk a, here. You can just step right in. I, I do wish, by the way, that there was a handle right here. I say that all the time. <laughs> if you're a driver and you grab the steering wheel, it's not a big deal. But if you're a passenger yeah. getting in, you feel like it's you hard. need something on yeah, the Yeah, you have to reach around the outside. Yep. Um, and then I love this little bit here. Tell me about that. So that is, uh, we also make that at DC. That is a stainless steel door sill protector. And you can see it's already saved some dings there. Yeah. So that is uh, double-sided taped on the vehicle with 3M automotive grade uh, tape. And it's easy to remove as well. And we have um, the same thing here in the back of the vehicle. Nice. Uh, the front seat is the same for the R1 TA and R1S. And the rear uh, is a little bit a little different, different for the truck cause, just because of the way that it works. Okay. The rear and, and I'm fascinated by this rack system over here with the nice orange lights. Yep. So that is a, uh, so we completely 3D scanned the roof and developed that. We have a proprietary CNC billet mounting um, we call that an accessory port adapter. And that allows on the truck and on the SUV, on the bed or the roof, um, a, a universal mounting point for any aftermarket accessory. And so we worked with Overland Rough Racks. We helped him do a lot of the engineering manufacturing on this. So this is his rack system. So this is, who's, who makes the rack? It's again? called Overland Rough Racks. Overland Rough Racks, okay. Um, and and is, this, is this a production model? Like some, This is production, you can buy this right now. Um, all sorts of different options, different handle colors, with the handles, without the lights, with the light bar, okay. bar designs, light bar, or rigid, or whatever you're comfortable with, okay. or no light bar at all. And 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 what is it? Is this using clearly? This is using the original mount points, but is it? Uh, are you removing device there? Or no. So this this is a complete bolt-on. So we have CNC components that kind of 
tie into that OEM location uh, okay. and bolt together. If you go on our website, you can take a look. We have a little GIF of how that all goes together. So, so can see that it. that mounting point, as well as the rack or the uh, running boards here, are all non-destructive mounting systems. So you can bolt it on, bolt it off, and return your vehicle to stock okay. if you choose to. Okay, cool. How do you find driving it with this particular setup with the top, with the roof closed or the tent closed? Like there's a little you, bit, there's a little bit of wind noise that you would have. No, and that's just the nature of having um, sure. a polycarbonate roof. It's, there's no yep. insulation in it and there is, okay. but we did work, do a lot of design work. Um, this dramatically reduces a lot of the noise through here and the angle of, of this helps uh, a lot. There is a version, like I said, Without yeah. a light bar, there's um, going to be there's going to be noise. There's no question. It's just a question of it's like, is it pretty invasive or not? And then the other question is, what is it? What is it happening as far as the drag? Right? Have you noticed the reduction in range? There's a slight reduction in range if you're putting larger tires or if you're adding um, adding other components. Uh, we're seeing depending. It's all depending on driving style, but it is. It goes from 288 mile range to 245 worst case with all these components. That's nice. 245 is still pretty darn good. Yep. Yeah, this is great. Well, what a great setup, Mike. Thank you so much for walking no me problem. through. Love it. Okay, this is Cam. He's uh, the owner of the R1T here. Cam, so this is pretty similar to what Mike was just telling us about the R1S over there. Couple of differences. So you've same DCE running board here. Similar, actually, this is the second generation, the, the one that we use kind of for the test. Oh, gotcha, okay. Bed, so. But it's, it's gonna be a little longer. Yes. Because of the wheelbase difference, yep. right? Um, and then, and then the rack, similar style rack, but uh, obviously only going over the top of the cabin. But I, I noticed also that it's like form fitted to the cabin. So is this manufactured specifically for the Rivian? Specifically Rivia? for the Rivian. Okay, cool. And what about the back racks? Back rack, same thing, specifically for the Rivian, because it's an odd length bed, right? Yep. And it has very special mounting points. So we use the DCE mounting hardware to mount the Overland rough rack on that. Okay, so tell me about this hardware because it's, this one is a little easier to see. Um, these are the original points here, the yeah. mounting points. Actually, these yeah. are not original. Here's one and here's one. Yeah. So what's going on with these? So these this are- This is these, mounting these into the thing. Mount points. And this is, I see, this is sitting on the bed with yeah, this. Is, this see gotcha. This, there's a plate gotcha. right here that- those, Yep, those yep, yep. I see that now. Um, one thing I'm curious about, and, and since you're the owner driver, um, how do you find this system works with respect to the tunnel cover? Because like a lot of us, this tunnels, you know, it'll come when it, later when it's more, more useful and effective, but I don't use mine a whole lot because I don't like opening and closing it. I don't either. I don't want it to break. Yeah. <laughs> same it, for me. It, it actually did break. I had the same thing and I got to replace it. Kind of pulled it. They, now it oh, worked. That's funny. I have, I have to replace one, but then I'm thinking like, okay, well that means that this space here becomes kind of useless or does it? Right, well, so when I'm carrying things that I'm worried about and I want to lock in, like our all of our gear here, so I then I use the tunnel cover. But like if I go to Costco, I'm, you open it. I open it up. I see, okay. Use it like a trunk. And then you've got uh, in this rack here. Yeah, so I'm gonna um, put a couple of um, recovery boards over here, but this is um, an air tank to air up the tires after you. Oh, gotcha. You use it, so. So even though you have the compressor system, you also have a second air yeah, tank. This, this airs it up super quick. A lot the faster. The compressor system's nice if you just yeah. got to do one tire, but if you're right. doing all four, you can you route want a line off here to do plug in all four. Nice to have a backup as well. Yeah. All right, I'm with Sam. I was just explaining that uh, one of the pain points with the R1S that we brought up here is that we don't really have a good rack system on the top of the R1S. And you are in, uh, you know, you're the creator or the inventor, whatever you call yes. it, the Overland Roof Racks, which are yeah. on both this R1T and that R1S just a, just a bit ago which yeah. with Mike. Yep. Um, tell me more about this rack and spe specifically about the, the contact points here. Yeah, well, you get a better picture of the, of the mounting point actually kind of here too as well. It's a three-piece mounting system and it's what's cool about it. We had to make up for some of the, the casting deficiencies with consistency on a cast piece on the truck. So you had to get this piece to lock together. It looks like a stealth fighter with all the angles. It's a, a mirrored piece. You drop it down in, it sits here. 
you put the plate over it, the base plate, then you lock it. When you tighten it up, it goes click. Now it's one piece and it seeds together. So no drilling, factory connection yeah. point here. Now I noticed though that that this point is not where the where the connection point yeah. is, but those those, those, those are. are. They are. So this bar is connected in here, but yes, it's it sitting on top of this. And it's pulled down it's and now okay. it becomes one piece. And it's the same thing with the roof rack. So on the roof rack, we come up here and if you notice, it's the same thing same mounting position, right? Three piece locked down, locked over the bracket. We go directly into it. And now what that gives me, now I'm a part of the frame structure of the roof. So now let's do this together. Grab the handle and let's shake it. Yeah. It's tough. It's going we nowhere. The truck, we can't yeah. move the rack. <laughs> and it's going nowhere. And that's yeah. what you want. You want that strength in there. We wanted some aerodynamics. We scan the top of the roof to get it exactly right. Yep. We incorporate the light bar. It comes with and without a light bar because we know there's some difficulties. Our, it's not easy to put lighting in here because of the 12 volt system. Yeah, what, how, does the light bar, how is the light bar powered? It's powered by DCE and WiseTech. They put together a bracket system and a 12 volt battery that's attached to the current battery system with the Switch Pro and yeah, it's, it's powering up the lights. Okay, so where, where's the wiring for this going? Uh, very strategically. So it goes to the back <laughs> over here through a mouse hole over here. We got a mouse hole in the rack, runs down, pipes down through there, down through the body, underneath the gotcha. hatch, all the way to the front, <laughs> back up to the switch pro, and then back inside to the actual controller. So this is, is that a non-destructive, does that require a, a hole to run that wire down through? We have to make the hole. And there's about, a, we had we had cameras with lights in there oh my gosh. <laughs> to find out the path, and they go down a channel all the way to the okay. front, up to the switch so pro. Maybe that's more for a pro install, yeah. but, uh, but still. What you can do, check this out. You could run that same cable if you had a bed rack down to here to a secondary battery and power it up. Because if you Right. Turn for a second here. My truck runs off a 100 amp, 100 amp hour lithium battery. All my lights in the back run through here, and I have a Switch Pro connected to the outside on a 100 amp hour lithium battery. So you can do the same thing in the truck. Right. So this is a slave unit, the original unit's on that side. So you can have temporarily the 100 amp hours, put a solar connection into it, lay out your panels, get temporary power, and have it lit up down the road as well. Dude, you're extra, man. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty love fun it. getting to this point. And, and by the way, I love the fact that I can step on this and hand grab the handle. What's the first thing you do? And look up there to get stuff off the rack. Super easy. And instinctually, and when you open the door to do it. Yeah, instinctually, when you do it, you do this, and it's here. It could be here, and it's this, and now you can access your gear, not holding on to. So like you feel comfortable climbing on this? If absolutely, you absolutely. I stand on it if I have right. to. This is great. What about wind noise for this None. particular thing here? None, because we conform to the body style. We have, also have a wind dampener that we have on our racks we could put on here as well. And it clips onto the edge here. Wind flows right up and over it. It's fine. Is there a version of the rack that does not have the lighting? Yes, we sell about 70% of them without the lights. So it would just be, it would just be a single? Yeah, a single fascia all the way across and you're good to go on okay, that. Okay, sweet. Well, Sam, thank you so much. You're welcome. This is amazing. I'm really excited about this. What a great way for me to end yeah. the expo, because guess what? I got to go home now. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate <laughs> thank it. You. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you later. Tell me where people can find this sort of stuff. Yeah, Overland Rough Racks. It's Overland and Rough Racks is R-U-F-F-R-A-X. My name is Sam. I'm the owner of the company. You call, I pick up the phone, send us an email, go to the website, overlandroughracks.com. We also have a YouTube channel. And the YouTube channel is Overland Rough Racks 8516. We post up now new videos of content like this. We're nice. happy to do it. We look forward to seeing you guys. And we got a little a little hip hop uh, to go along. <laughs> there with it this is. As well. Thank All you. right, guys. See you later. Thanks, Sam. All right. All right, folks. Well, that's a wrap. I've got to head home. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please subscribe if you find this content useful. Please like the videos. It really does help a lot. We'll see you in the next one.